So we hear the Lenaro Connect and the, hi, so who are you? I am Rebecca Toe from Xilinx and we're here at Lenaro Connect Vancouver 2018 with our partners Avnet and we're demonstrating the capabilities of the Ultra 96 which is one of the first boards in the 96 community or 96 boards community to feature programmable logic but it's unique because it, it integrates the programmable logic together with the powerful A53 um, quad-core processor along with the Mali GPU and the R5 real-time processors. And uh, can you introduce? Hi, so who are Hi, you? Hi, I'm Boris Pickett. I'm from Xilinx. We're actually demonstrating here what we call a Python framework for software engineers. Uh, we, it is Python running on Zinc, so the name we give it is Pink. And we're actually using a mezzanine board on top of the Ultra 96 to control little different peripherals on here. We've sold Hello Lenaro on here. We can actually change that code right up here using Python inside of Jupyter Notebooks. Jupyter Notebooks is a leading edge technology that allows software to be done directly in these boxes along with the lines of the comments to show you what you're doing. It makes sort of an executable spec so we can actually change the lines of Hello Lenaro and hashtag YBR18. We can change those and show something different on the LCD. And this is the way that software engineers can utilize a Ultra 96 through Jupyter Notebooks and Python on a Ultra 96 board that we're showing here today. So this Jupyter is uh, like a command system online or it is it is actually a it is not we're running it in a browser so we're actually running it on the device through a network connection and then the notebook is actually a way to interface software to um, devices all right so um, uh, how many different things are possible to do with the FPGA in this board? Right now with the FPGA, with the hardware that we've loaded, we can actually change what's going on with the LCD controller. We can make a buzzer beep. We can take sensors and turn them on or off. This is a very simple design to do this. But if you want more powerful examples of what can be done in, in the FPGA portion uh, or programmable logic, we can actually go to this demonstration and Craig can join us and explain a little bit about more what's going on here and what can be done with the programmable logic. All right, so hi, so who are you? Hi, I'm Fred Kellerman, uh, I'm from Abnet, and I'm here at uh, Lenaro Connect. I've got a, a demo running on the Ultra 96, it's a 96 boards product, and uh, what I'm doing with this board is detecting uh, black holes. So we live in a big universe, out in the universe, a billion light years away, we have black holes that are drifting around, finding each other, circling around and converging into one black hole. And this is an application running on the 96 board that's doing the signal processing to uh, pull the signal of that black hole merger out of the noise. And a little demonstration of the waveforms involved and the, when two black holes do move together and form one, they actually create a chirp signal. So uh, how, how does that work? How can you detect black holes with the with the board? The board is right here. Yeah. And uh, what, what are you asking technical questions? Do you need are there sensors or so uh, the data for the the board is set up to do the pulse processing of the data. The data is actually being collected from uh, two LIGO stations. One's in Washington State, and one's in uh, Louisiana, the USA. And there's a third station in Germany called Virgo. All three of those stations are running all the time and collecting the gravity wave measurements. And then they're saving those measurements uh, to a server. And the 96 boards can tap into and read the data from the server and process it. All this in a little board like this? Yes. So uh, you, you would, but the scientists would uh, would be doing that on on boards like that, or yes, they will be developing here to later put it in the cloud on the bigger FPGAs, yes. or how yes. does it work? Yeah, the uh, the actual real system itself that takes the major is a very expensive, very uh, complicated apparatus. But as far as the signal processing and um, taking the data that comes out of that apparatus. The Ultra 96 board is a lot like the real equipment that they would use. Uh, and uh, right here it's showing some uh, some of that data. Yes. Uh, so it's, it's great for scientists who want to do advanced stuff. Yeah. 
and they start working on the board and then later that's right is to get into the FPGA world, right? That's right, in the FPGA. And also, what's really cool about this is this is a low-cost board. So you could uh, learn how to use this board and you can do this kind of uh, signal processing yourself at home. It won't be as fast as the multi-million dollar pieces of equipment, but it can still do it fast enough to be useful. And uh, not that many years ago, you couldn't even begin to do some of the stuff that that board you know, can do. Is it one of the things that AppNet is doing is uh, help provide uh, this kind of technology to as many developers as possible? Yes, yep. And it also uh, relies on, so the prior demo for us talked to you about Pink, and uh, this board is also running the Pink platform which that is going to enable software developers uh, to be able to use the hardware to accelerate their applications to do this kind of scientific uh, computing processing. All right. Thanks a lot. Thanks. So hi, so, so who are you? Hi, so I'm Adam Taylor, and I write the Microsoft Chronicles. And what we have here is an example of a simple Internet of Things application. So one of the great powers of the uh, Ultra 96 is that we can use, uh, yeah. use it for Internet of, Internet of Things. So this is a little example I put up due to my uh, due to my young son actually. So it uses the uh, the I/O interface on the top, so the the starter kit on the top, and it it has a simple temperature sensor here, which is logging the logging the environment. The the Ultra 96 is then running a little bit of simple software, which then pushes that information into the cloud, so we can log it and see what the see what the information is. So you can see here that it's logging the logging the temperature and approximately 20 seconds it takes uh, it takes another measurement reading which is a, which is the, uh, the the ambient temperature essentially it then uses a very popular internet connectivity program program called if this then that which then triggers these lights here to actually flash and alert a warning if they if the temperature is below a certain set point that the user can set on their uh, mobile phone so the reason this came about is that I have a young son, his bedroom gets really warm because we have a fairly new built house and obviously it's dangerous for young children to sleep in uh, warm temperature. So I wanted a system that would monitor it and alert me over the internet but wouldn't actually tell me, wouldn't actually wake my son up actually. So, so flashing the lights was quite a good, quite a good example. So the set point's set by your mobile phone or an application and it works, it works quite well. So it just demonstrates the power of the Ultra 96. And uh, so why, why is uh, FPGA good for this kind of use case? So this, ca this use case actually I'm not using the programmable logic in the FPGA on this, this is just purely running on the ARM A53 cores. So obviously you could use the, uh, the programmable logic to interface to sensors and such like, but actually I, I use the Grove internet, the Grove starter kit for that. So what Really what I'm trying to show here is that the Ultra 96, even though it's a heterogeneous SOC, it's got programmable logic and process codes in there, it can still integrate with fairly common IoT standards and you can get it up and running quite quickly and without any issues whatsoever. So it's running Petal Linux on there and it's, it's all, all the applications actually written in Python. So it's all, all written in Python. All right.